the time has come to honor two individuals who have made unique contributions to our initiative and for that matter to the global initiative. Tonight they are receiving the one million dollar Eric and Sheila Sampson Prize, Prime Minister's Prize for Innovation in Alternative Fuels for Transportation, awarded for global innovation or a scientific or technological breakthrough. Let's take a couple of minutes to learn more about tonight's honorees. In 2011, the Government of Israel, headed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, initiated the National Program to Reduce the Global Dependence on Oil, with the aim of encouraging global innovation and scientific breakthroughs in the field of alternative transportation fuels. In order to promote the goals of this initiative, the Prime Minister's Office, along with the Ministry of Science, Technology and Space and Karen Hayesod, will grant an annual award, the Eric and Sheila Sampson Prime Minister's Prize for Innovation in Alternative Fuels for Transportation. This prize of 1 million US dollars will be awarded by the Prime Minister of the State of Israel on a yearly basis over the next 10 years. This is the biggest prize awarded anywhere in the world in the field of fuel substitutes. Eric and Sheila Sampson, Israeli citizens, international business leaders and philanthropists are deeply devoted to the State of Israel and committed to the mission of Karen Hayesod. For administration of the prize, the Fuel Choices Initiative established an independent board of trustees headed by former Technion President Professor Itzhak Apolog and including seven prominent researchers from Israel and around the world. My name is John Bannister Goodenough. I'm a professor at the the Materials Research Institute of the University of Texas. I suppose I'm most well known for enabling the lithium-ion battery. I was aware of people trying to make a lithium-ion battery with layered sulfides, and I recognized that one with an oxide could get a much higher voltage, and that would allow you to do something a little bit different. In the meantime, people were inserting lithium into graphite, and uh, so the Japanese put the two together and made the first lithium-ion battery, and the uh, wireless revolution was on its way. People have then recognized that perhaps there's enough energy density for an electric car. While you're sleeping, you got at least four hours to recharge the battery, but if you wish to compete with fossil fuels, you have to be able to recharge it with within 10 minutes. I've got some ideas, I hope they work. One of the things that everybody seeks is, what can I do that gives meaning to my life? I've had the privilege of being able to participate in a very society transforming period. If my work gives me some sense of meaning, then that gives me pleasure and joy. My name is Jay Kiesling. I'm Chief Executive Officer of the Joint Bioenergy Institute. The main areas of research at JBay are understanding how plants make their cell walls and then engineering those plants to produce more sugars, and then understanding how to transform those sugars into advanced biofuels, hydrocarbons that can directly substitute for diesel jet fuel and gasoline. Amaris is a synthetic biology company that grew out of my laboratory. Amaris has produced biofuels that are fueling buses in Sao Paulo and Rio, and their jet fuels are now fueling flights between Miami and Sao Paulo. It's really exciting for me to win this prize. I feel it's a recognition of all of the science that's been going on at the Joint Bioenergy Institute over the last eight years to understand how to transform cellulosic biomass into advanced biofuels. My dream is that someday in the future, we'll be able to pull up to any gas station with our car or truck, and there'll be a pump there that has advanced biofuels available to the consumer. This will reduce our dependence on petroleum. It will also reduce the amount of carbon we put in the atmosphere and slow climate change and global warming.
And now to present the Eric and Sheila Sampson Prime Minister's Prize for Innovation in Alternative Fuels for Transportation, I call to the stage Israel's Minister of Science, Technology and Space, Ophira Kunis, the World Chairman of Karen Hayaso, the United Israel Appeal, Eliezer Moody Zandberg, the Chairman of the Sampson Prize Board of Trustees and former President of the Technion, Professor Yitzhak Apoloig, and representing the Prime Minister's Office, which grants this award, the Chairman and Director of the Fuel Choices Initiative, Eyal Rosner. And of course, last but certainly not least, please welcome the generous benefactors who have made this prize possible, Eric and Sheila Sampson. All we need now is two prize recipients. Please join me in welcoming this year's Sampson Prize winners, Professor John Goodenough and Professor Jay Kiesling. Let's hear a few words first from Professor Goodenough. Gentlemen all, I would like to acknowledge you all, and I would like to thank all the people of Israel who've been so kind to me when I've come, and for their joy at being members of this country. It has been exciting to see the joy in your citizen. It, I would like all of you to know how deeply I have been moved by the invitation to come to Israel and to celebrate with you the Sheila and Eric Sampson Award. This award is a symbol of the interest of the people of Israel to develop technology that is going to better all of mankind. And I think it's a wonderful endeavor that you're involved with. I speak with a foreign tongue, but I share with all those who strive to serve the spirit of creative love, the meditations of your hearts. May the spirit of love liberate us from our prisons, lighten our paths, accept our poor efforts at service and give us all joy, joy in our membership and relationship to creation, joy in our mutual efforts to try to understand the meaning of life and the workings of nature that we may better serve in love our neighbors as ourselves. Toda Shalom. Turns out we can also innovate love. And now from our second Samson Prize winner, Professor Kiesling. That's a very tough act to follow. Um, I'd first like to thank the Sampsons for this award and the Government of Israel. It's a great honor uh, to receive this award. We have the opportunity to change how we do transportation on the planet. In the U.S. alone, we have a billion tons of biomass that goes unutilized. And if we turn that into transportation fuels, we can replace roughly a third of the petroleum we use with renewable fuels that won't add additional carbon to the atmosphere. Biology can be part of the solution, and that's what we've been exploring over the last eight years through the generous funding of the U.S. Department of Energy. Biology can also transform many other sectors of our economy, and it's the bioeconomy that I've been coming to Israel now 
three times in three years to talk about. California and Israel have a lot in common. They share uh, some very similar climates and they share an enthusiasm for innovation. We've been working on a concept of transforming the bioeconomy through biofoundries. And I look forward to working with Israel more on this concept. And I think that this award very much symbolizes the power of biology to transform transportation fuels and other aspects of the economy. So again, I'd like to thank the Sampsons. I'd like to thank Israel and all of you for this honor.